Do, 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 everybody. I ain't got no cold open. No cold open for this video. Not this video. Maybe next video. <laughs> Greetings one and all and welcome back to Tom's Hit Parade. By the way, I invite you to hit that subscribe button, give me a thumbs up, share this video with your friends, and leave me your thoughts down in the comment section. I'd really appreciate it. So, here we are. I thought I would, uh, since I made you wait so long for chapter 18, I thought I would put chapter 19 of my whole darn CD collection hot on its heels for you so you don't have to, I mean, you deserved a double whammy, a double dip, if you will. After such a long wait, two months worth of wait, I will try not to do that again. But then I think I said that before the last hiatus. So anyway, uh, and since I'm doing this right on the heels of Chapter 18, uh, I don't have any recent arrivals, so let's just dip right into it, and hopefully we'll make this video a little bit shorter. So, at the end of Chapter 18, I showed you shma Smash Mouse. Smash Mouse. My mouse is Smash. Smash Mouse Fush You Mang. That's what I was trying to say. And so let's go on with the next one. We have Astro Lounge. Yes, this one has oh, uh, uh, All Star, of course, their big, big hit. And then the morning comes. And they, uh, you know these guys. I don't need to read you the track listing. And then we have their uh, self-titled album. This is the last in the uh, their run of albums that I cared to have. Uh, Pacific Coast Party is one of my favorite songs of theirs. I don't know why. Uh, I kind of like songs about California. Maybe in, a, in another video I'll explain why those those kinds of songs are fond. To, uh, I'm fond of those kinds of songs. But anyway, Holiday in My Head. That was another good song off this album. So yeah, there's those. And then something for something complete, completely different. Bessie Smith. She was a classic uh, jazz singer from back in the oh, 30s, I think it was, was, when she started. Yes, one of the very, very first... Uh, uh, hit recording artists, really, when records started really becoming a thing, becoming affordable and accessible to the general population. Uh, far as I know, I, I'm, I'm kind of ad-libbing this uh, in terms of history, so I could be wrong. But yes, she's a wonderful voice, fantastic jazz and blues singer. Uh, give her a shot if uh, you haven't yet. Then we have Kurt Smith. He is one half of Tears for Fears, and this CD actually came in um, when I bought... Tears for Fears, two big 80s albums, uh, Songs from the Big Chair and uh, The Hurting, their deluxe editions. Uh, this was included in the eBay lot for free. So, uh, well, I guess not really for free since I was paying for the whole lot anyway. Yeah, not one of my favorites, but uh, it was a freebie, so who am I to look a gift horse in the mouth, figuratively speaking. And then we have, uh, we're kind of got something different one right after the other here. Uh, you can't get much further away from Kurt Smith than Will Smith, except for their last name. And no, I don't think they're related. Anyway, yes, Will Smith, I, I kind of had to have. I'm not a huge hip-hop art uh, listener, but you kind of have to have his stuff. It, it is very much definitely on the lighter end of hip-hop with, you know, Parents Just Don't Understand and A Nightmare on My Street, the uh, classic uh, DJ Jazzy Jeff and Fresh Prince hits. And then, of course, the title track, the title song from The Fresh Prince of Bel-Air, the sitcom. And then he goes into his solo material on here as well. Uh, Wild Wild West, Nod Your Head from uh, Men in Black 2, as well as Men in Black, uh, the title song from the first movie. I love those movies, by the way. Two of my favorite uh, movies. Then we have a recent uh, discovery of mine, Todd Snyder. Uh, it was actually... This guy was born and raised in Portland, you know, right here in Oregon, and yet it took my friend from Oklahoma, to put this guy on my radar. He actually had the CD in a, uh, a little gift bundle that he gave to me. And it's like, I saw this guy. And I've probably seen this CD out and about here and there. I just never paid any particular attention to it. I thought, hmm, I'll give it a try. And I looked him up online and realized he's an Oregonian. Go figure, huh? But as it turns out, this was one of my favorite discoveries, thank you, Noah, in the last several years. I just love this guy. He's got a great sense of humor on a lot of these songs. Uh, the opening track is My Generation Part 2. It kind of uh, is a spiritual sequel, in a way, to the Who song, My Generation. And there's a hidden track on the end of this. I can't remember what it's called. It's actually uh, its own track on his Greatest Hits album. 
but it's a uh, takeoff of um, Bob Dylan's um, Subterranean Homesick Blues, I think it is. Uh, you know, a very, very similar arrangement and similar vocal style. It's just he does it as um, the story of a band that uh, breaks out and uh, follows some of the stupidest trends you could ever think to have in music. It's very much a parody and a satire of the music industry. Great, great song. And there are other great songs on this album. Again, I don't want to make this video too long. But suffice to say, I love that album enough that I picked up his sophomore album, Step Right Up. I actually had a feeling I would like Todd Snyder enough that I picked this one up before I heard uh, his debut album, uh, Songs of the Daily Planet is the name of that song, or, or Songs for the Daily Planet is the name of that album. And then his sophomore album, Step Right Up. And just last week, I got in uh, an eBay order, yeah, I got in the mail, his third album, Viva Satellite. No, it's not Via Satellite, it's Viva Satellite. And perhaps my least favorite of his first three albums, but not by very much. He's just, he's great. you you got to check him out. He's a uh, rock and roll singer-songwriter type of stuff. A little bit on the folky side uh, and a little bit on the country side. I mean, he kind of does, meanders all the way through the rock, country, and genres. And it's, you, you won't get bored listening to his albums. Let me put it that way. That way. And then we have a bargain bag discovery from, I think this was from like my first, maybe second year of bargain bag. So it's going back a few years. Snow Cone. They are kind of a, uh, an EDM sort of a thing. Uh, electronic, uh, maybe a little bit of a resemblance to Beck, as I recall. It's been a while since I've listened to this. But yes, good, good stuff. And then throwing back to the early days of country music, the essential Hank Snow. I believe this was in my sister's collection, CD collection, so... And then we have the best of Phoebe Snow. This was actually in the dollar section at House of Records. And yes, she was a an, an soul artist from the 60s and 70s. Uh, Poetry Man, I think, was one of her big hits. Uh, she does a... Is it a cover of Shaky Ground? I think... Didn't Sly and the Family Stone do Shaky Ground first? Anyway, she does this song on this album, too. But yeah, I had heard about Phoebe Snow before, but had never really listened to any of her stuff. So, turns out she's real good. Then we have uh, something that only you Canadians may know about. She is she is unknown here in the States, <clears throat> and I hope I get her name pronounced correctly. Teresa Sokirka. She was the runner-up on the first season of Canadian Idol. Um, Kaylin, Kaylin Porter won that season of Idol. And so in my uh, quest several years ago to pick up as many of the uh, international Idol alumni as I could, decided to go ahead and pick her CD up. It's pretty good. And then we have a recent, very recent CD here. Uh, just uh, I just got this one like, a couple weeks ago. This is the new album by Sparks, uh, The Girl is Crying in Her Latte. I had never listened to a Sparks album before. This was playing at House of Records one day, and I really, really liked what I heard. So I decided to pick it up, and this will likely not be the last uh, Sparks album that I pick up. I really like those guys. Speaking of Sparks... We have Jordan Sparks, American Idol winner, I believe. Uh, very, very good R&B stuff. And the song Tattoo. When I played the CD, I listened to the song. It's like, gee, I've heard that song a lot. Was it that popular on the radio? It must have been. Either that or I've heard it somewhere else. I don't know. Anyway, she's good. Then we have an artist that I kind of wish uh, had come to the attention of a lot more people. Sam Sparrow. He is a, a pop, kind of electro-pop and maybe dance-pop artist. Uh, very good stuff, and um, great lyrics in a lot of his songs. Kind of thought-provoking lyrics. Uh, 21st Century Life is a good song. Black and Gold is another really good one. And then... Uh, can't remember any of the other ones off the top of my head off this album. But yes, this is his self-titled debut album. And I also picked up his sophomore album, Return to Paradise, which is which is equally good. So, yeah. And then we have Britney Spears. A few of you out there might have heard of her. Uh, this is obviously the playlist um, uh, version. And <laughs> I'm going to have to do kind of a, uh, a rebuttal video <clears throat> uh, directed at uh, Briar from Briar's Music Showcase. He hates the playlist series, but uh, I have actually have 
uh, quite a number of them, as you have seen and will continue to see in my uh, my CD collection here. So they're not as bad. They're not as sucky as he claims. So I, I plan on doing a kind of a rebuttal video and uh, to extol the charms of the playlist series, of which there are some. Anyway, uh, this was in my last bargain bag CD, and I really, really enjoyed it. Uh, the Spin Doctors, Pocket Full of Crypt Night. Uh, I liked it so much that I am uh, on the hunt for their sophomore album, because I think this was their debut. And then we have, uh, nodding back to Star Trek, we have Brent Spiner. Uh, he played Data on Star Trek The Next Generation. Uh, this is his salute to uh, Frank Sinatra and the old-time crooners. Old Yellow Eyes is back. Yellow Eyes is an allusion to his character Data on Star Trek. Yes, this, this was a fun album, and... They actually have, one of the songs has uh, backup vocals by The Sunspots, LeVar Burton, Michael Dorn, Jonathan Frakes, and Patrick Stewart. And believe it or not, for those of you who don't know, Brent Spiner has an amazing singing voice. He's a fantastic singer. And he's actually done um, demonstrated that a couple times on Star Trek here and there uh, in the various TV uh, episodes and movies. So yeah, fun and entertaining album. And then we have... The CDs are not wanting to cooperate. They keep wanting to flop over. Then we have Dusty Springfield with Dusty in Me Memphis. This is the expanded version of the album. Uh, for a long time, I had the Digipack edition, you know, in the, the uh, paperboard sleeves. And I didn't think that a uh, jewel case edition of it existed. But yes, I found it one, way, one day. And yes, this, uh, this deluxe edition more than doubles the length, as you can see, of the standard edition. Original one only had 11 tracks. This one brings it up to a whopping, what is it, 25 tracks. So, yes, I was very happy to find that. And uh, the only other Dusty Springfield CD I have right now is her uh, 20th Century Masters installment. Very good, uh, Scott. I only want to be with you, wishing and hoping. You don't have to say you love me. She was a fantastic singer. And uh, now we're coming to Bruce Springsteen. Now, I do have his first six albums, five or six, but they are in a box set, and you will see my box sets in probably the final chapter of my CD collection series. So yes, I do have those. Um, first one I'm going to show you, though, is uh, this is his uh, live three-disc, three-CD live set. Now, it's a handmade, you know, a homemade uh, inserts. I printed them out on my laser printer, my... Uh, inkjet printer at home with the cover art because the three CDs were just in uh, those little plastic sleeves in the $1 section at House of Records. So I got the entire three-disc set uh, for a dollar. Uh, I just uh, had to do the inserts myself. So, uh, excuse me. A little bit of dust or possibly cat hair. I can't imagine where cat hair would come from uh, in uh, brushing against my eye there. So Anyway, so yeah, a great live set. And actually, Noah gifted me the cassette version of that box set. So I've actually got it on cassette as well. So very cool. And then uh, going on with his studio albums, we've got Tunnel of Love, Human Touch, Lucky Town, The Ghost of Tom Joad, the Rising, which was in my sister's uh, CD collection. And I think Devils and Dust was also in my sister's collection. Uh, there were actually, what, three or four of them in her collection. And then we've got uh, We Shall Overcome, The Seeker Sessions. Kind of got into, I didn't have this one until recently, and I'd gotten into Pete Seeger's folk songs. So decided to go ahead, and since I'm a Springsteen fan, pick up the uh, Springsteen's renditions of Pete Seeger songs. Then we have Magic. I believe this one was also in my sister's collection. You will notice that I am missing a few of his recent albums. Uh, I've got uh, Working on a Dream. I also just recently, I think I picked this one up at FYE a couple months ago when they were going out of business. It was still sealed. And then I've got Western Stars. Very, very good album. And his covers album from earlier this year, or was it last year? Uh, Only the Strong Survive. So yes, I think I'm missing three of his more recent albums, as you can tell. Uh, moving on to another group, but this is a group that I don't think anybody has heard of. Very few of people, at least. 
They're called Spy Mob, and this is their one and only album, um, sitting, ar sitting Around Keeping Score, and it is, as you can see, the Japanese edition. It's got the Obi strip here. Yes, Spy, Bo Spy Mob is, I should have done the homework before I rolled the camera, they were the backing band, so to speak, for N-E-R-D, Nerd, I think. I may be wrong about that, but you'll see it if you look up their bio on uh, Wikipedia or whatever. You'll see their credentials. But yes, they have been on albums before, just not under their own name. This is some great, catchy stuff. Kind of, uh, kind of rock, kind of dance rock, basically. A bit dancier version of The Killers, perhaps. And a little bit more, more laid back, you know, not quite as, you know, high beats per minute uh, electro pop. Uh, not leaning that side, just more, a little more breezy. But yes, 2040 is the opening track. That's really fun. Uh, it, get, it gets me going. Uh, the title track, Sitting Around Keeping Score. Stand Up and Win is one of my favorite songs on here. Uh, National Holidays is great. But yeah, this is a very, very underrated album. Uh, you got to check it out on streaming if it's available. I th it's, I'm pretty sure it's available on streaming. Check it out. The domestic version, I think, is has a red or orange color scheme, not the green color scheme. So it'll look different when you look it up online. But yes, great album. And then we have, as much as I like Power Pop, this is the only Squeeze album that I have, uh, Babylon and On. I've been looking to, re to uh, replace the CD version with vinyl. I have not found it on vinyl yet. Uh, but yes, a great album. Hourglass is probably my favorite Squeeze song. But this has got that song in here, as well as uh, uh, Trust Me to Open My Mouth. And uh, a couple other really good songs on here. So yeah, good album. And then another, another artist that almost nobody has heard of, I'm sure. George Stanford. Uh, Noah has heard of this guy, because I think I gifted this CD to him. But yes, uh, singer-songwriter. Some great stuff, great lyrics in his songs. Um, very singer-songwriter-ish. Uh, Big Drop, the title track, is really, really good. Get Free is one of my favorite songs uh, of, of this whole, you know, subgenre of music. Uh, my Own Worst Enemy, the opening track, is really good. Uh, Let's Stay Here is really, really good. That's got a really kind of a cool, almost a, uh, almost like a Simon and Garfunkel or Paul Simon-esque bouncy sort of a beat. To that song. But yeah, check out this album, Big Drop by George Stanford. I'm giving you an awful lot of stuff to check out. Uh, hope you're keeping a list. Anyway, uh, then we have Star Sailor. This is their uh, sophomore album, I believe. Silence is Easy. The title track is fantastic. I love that song. There's another one. Oh, mu Music Was Saved. That's the opening track. That's really good. So yeah, good album. It's kind of, they're kind of Britpop. They're in, in, lumped in with the Britpop uh, bands more often than not, but of course they didn't get nearly as famous as Oasis or Blur. And this next CD was, I believe, a gift from Noah. Uh, Trampoline by the band Steel Train. This was one of uh, Jack Antonoff's uh, earlier earlier projects. Earlier, I think. Yeah, 2007 is the, uh, the uh, copyright done on here. So, yeah, good stuff. Uh, I have not... Uh, latched onto it as strongly as uh, several other things that Noah has sent me, but it is not leaving my collection. So thank you, Noah. And then we're getting into the full discography. And that's another video I want to do at some point is artists whose full discographies I have. And uh, this example would be Steely Dan. Uh, my sister had, must have been four or five of their albums. And it's like I looked online and their entire discography was just nine albums. So I figured, okay, why don't I go ahead and collect the rest of them. Uh, Can't Buy a Thrill was that one, their daily album. Uh, Countdown to Ecstasy, Pretzel Logic, Katie Lied, we have The Royal Scam, and Asia, Gaucho, that brings us to the, to the halfway point, by the way, uh, Two Against Nature, and Everything Must Go is their most recent album. Well, probably their last since... Which one was it uh, who passed away recently? I can't remember. <clears throat> oh, yes. This video, I'm delighted to say, is going to be much shorter 
than the last video. <clears throat> and by the way, before I forget to say it again, any of these CDs that you see that you would like to know more about, you'd like to hear me talk more about, let me know down in the comment section and I'll do a uh, my whole CD collection by request videos at some point. Next up we have the Steve Miller Band. This is their complete greatest hits, a one disc set. My sister really liked the Steve Miller Band. Um, I couldn't get quite as much into them, but this one I had to keep from her collection just because of the cover art. It's, it's, it is dad joke worthy cover art. A great pun on this. Let your hair down. So uh, a uh, rabbit or hair is on the sitting on the top of his head, and it's got a ladder to let him down from the top of his head. Uh, I love the joke. What can I say? I'm not a dad, but I love dad jokes. So yes, that cover gets the highest points from me. It's, whoever thought of that was an absolute genius. I gotta say. Anyway, <laughs> moving on. Uh, Cat Stevens, T for the Tillerman, classic album. And how could you have tea for the Tillerman without having teaser on the fire cat? You're just nuts if you don't have both of these. Anyway. Okay, not really, but, you know. And, of course, I had to have... Okay, my sorting scheme is kind of breaks the rules with Cat Stevens because, obviously, he has been known in his more recent years as Yusuf. But this is a direct sequel to tea for the Tillerman, uh, so I had to put it under Cat Stevens. And in a way it fits because, as you can see on the spine, he bills himself as both Yusuf and Cat Stevens. So I can legitimately put it with his Cat Stevens CDs. So, so don't judge me. Don't dock me any points for doing it that way. But his most recent album, uh, King of a Land, I have down in the Wise with Yusuf. You'll see it later. Anyway, this guy I've been a fan of for a long time. I've had one, maybe two different hit CDs of his through the years. And then I found this one about, oh, eight months ago or so at House of Records. Didn't even know it existed, and it was so much better than any of the other greatest hit CDs that I picked it up. And there's a reason it's so much better. It's a Rhino issue. Rhino puts out the best compilations, I'm telling you. Ray Stevens. And uh, yes, it comes out, uh, the track list leads off with the first, uh, the, the modestly titled, and one of my favorite songs of his, Jeremiah Peabody's Quick Dissolving, Fast Acting, Pleasant Tasting, Green and Purple. Oh, I messed up. Jeremiah Peabody's Poly Unsaturated, Quick Dissolving, Fast Acting, Pleasant Tasting, Green and Purple Pills. You'll notice I read that without reading without reading it off the, uh, the backwards image on the uh, tablet. Anyway, uh, A had the Arab, which is probably would not be politically correct nowadays. And uh, his Christmas song, Santa Claus is Watching You. Um, Harry the Hairy Ape. And Guitar Zan. I really like Guitar Zan. That's a really good one. And then he has his, uh, well, of course he has the streak on here, the, the one he's most famous for. And that is, Yeah, that is on here. And then, of course, he has songs of a bit more serious bent that he was famous for. Uh, Everything is Beautiful. That's a very nice song. That's a good song. So, yeah, a well-rounded and... Uh, probably more expansive than any other collection that I've had of his, of Ray Stevens. Gotta love Ray Stevens. So much so that I have a live CD of his. This was in my sister's collection as well. So I've got a lot of stuff that my sister had in her collection. So, And there's a song or two on here that, and I can't remember which one it was, but uh, I think it was the Mississippi Squirrel Revival that's on here as a live version, but the studio version, actually no version at all, was on his uh, greatest hits, so one reason why I'm keeping the live CD. Plus, you know, the audience reactions, is, uh, they're, they're fun to listen to. Then we have another CD from my sister's collection, uh, Al Stewart, uh, his greatest hits. Is it? Um, yeah, greatest hits. Uh, kind of an unusual artist to listen to, got a very unusual sound, kind of a sibilant S's he sings in his songs. So uh, that's that was a little, I don't know, I hope it doesn't make me sound prejudiced, but that's a little bit, a little bit of a detractor from me wanting to listen to him more. He makes great songs, uh, great lyrics, and great instrumentation, great melodies. Just to that sibilant s. There's there's one, time passages, and electric Los Angeles sunset, and you know just you know it's uh, okay. 
you you can chastise me if if I I'm not making fun of it. It's just I'm just pointing out that it's there. Sorry. Anyway. Yeah. Good artist. I'm keeping the CD not just because it was my sister's, but because I like the music. So I'm sitting here complaining about his sibilant S, and yet I've got a CD and I enjoy it. So what's wrong with me? Anyway, uh, Rod Stewart, uh, Vagabond Heart. This one is, this may actually have his biggest collection of uh, hits on here. He's got Rhythm, Rhythm of My Heart, a well, great, great song. Uh, it takes two, a duet with the late, great Tina Turner. And what else on here? Oh, the Motown song, being a song about music. It's one of my favorite uh, Rod Stewart songs. And Have I Told You Lately? So you'd almost think that this was a Greatest Hits collection. So yeah, great stuff. And uh, I have a few more Rod Stewart. For as much as I could take him or leave him, I actually have several Rod Stewart CDs. Uh, his installment of Unplugged. Very good. And a two-disc Greatest Hits Collection, the definitive Rod Stewart. And uh, I could almost do without this because it has uh, several of the songs on Vagamon Heart that I w was keeping this one for. But then this one has a lot of his earlier stuff, which I don't have otherwise. So, And then we have Soul Book, which is a, cover a covers album of uh, soul songs. And You'll notice that uh, something is abs absent from here. His Great American Songbook series. Uh, a couple of years ago, I went on a little impulse binge and bought like the first four volumes, listened to them. I cooled on them a lot faster than I thought I would and got rid of them. But then this cover album, I'm hanging on to. It has a lot to do with the guest artists that are on here. Jennifer Hudson is on here. Stevie Wonder, Mary J. Blige, and Smokey Robinson also appear on here. So... And I do like, you know, those were the Great American Songbook songs. And so I've part of it was I've got a lot of albums already that have covers of those songs. So it's kind of like more and more. And it goes also goes back to the fact that I'm not huge crazy about Rod Stewart. But soul songs, I have a little bit more of an attachment to, especially Motown. So I think that's the reason why I'm keeping this uh, over his Great American Songbook volumes. So. Anyway, uh, as we go on to a rock group called Stir, uh, this was, I actually got their first album in a bargain bag, uh, which I was kind of looking forward to because I've had this one for a lot longer. Uh, I kind of, uh, that one kind of cooled on me and so I got rid of it. But this one is fantastic. I've owned it for well, almost 20 years. It came out in the year 2000. Um, Grounded is my favorite song on this album. It's, it's sad and... Uh, <clears throat> But it's got a great, um, it's just a great song, just the lyrics are kind of sad, and uh, the melody and instrumentation coupled with the sad lyrics just kind of puts tears in my eyes. You know, it's just that special recipe that, it, it's a bit of a tearjerker song. And then uh, uh, Superstation is the first one. That, that's really good. That's a really rocking song. Um, grounded as a ballad, which is real good. Uh, a New Beginning is a good song. Uh, Stop Killing Me. So yes, great, great songs on here. Um, for some reason, I just love this one ten times more than their debut album. It just, their debut album didn't seem to have any songs that really stuck with me for some reason. So, but yes, a good album. Uh, Holy Dogs is the name of that album. It's by a group called Stir. Then we have Joss Stone. I used to have more of Joss Stone, but this is now the only one I've got. The Soul Sessions. Good stuff. And, I mean, she's got a fantastic soulful voice. Uh, one of the best soul voices out there. It's just, you know... One reason why I am not keeping a lot of albums... Well, <laughs> comparatively speaking. The last time I purged was because I can stream music now, so I'm able to... You know, unless it's something that I really, really want to have a hard copy of on CD... I'm trying to let go of the CDs that I don't listen to as much anymore because I have the capability of streaming something whenever I want to hear it. So anyway, I've got a nice little run of uh, five albums here by a group called Straight No Chaser. They are an a cappella group, very talented. Uh, you guys have probably heard of them. Uh, they do Don't Dream It's Over, the uh, Crowded House song, You're My Best Friend, the... Uh, um, 
Queen classic. Uh, the Living Years, which I can't remember who did that one. Wonderwall, the Oasis song. <clears throat> Very good stuff. And uh, With a Twist was the name of that album. Then their subsequent album, uh, Under the Influence. Yes, all of the, uh, well, some of the uh, album titles are uh, drink-themed. And this one, they kind of upped their game by bringing on some uh, featured artists to help them out with their songs. Sarah Bareilles duets with them on I Want You Back, the Jackson, or the, uh, Jackson 5 song. And then, uh, the print on here is so small. Rob Thomas is on here uh, uh, featuring on his own song, uh, This Is How a Heart Breaks. Uh, Sign Seal Delivered, I'm Yours. Guests uh, has Stevie Wonder as a guest on there. So yeah, Phil Collins. Uh, guests on Against All Odds, Take a Look at Me Now. Uh, Don't Let the Sun Go Down on Me features uh, Elton John. And a cover of Jolene with Dolly Parton guesting. So yes, this is a really good album. And this is a deluxe version that has a few uh, extra tracks on it. I had the standard version for a long time. Saw this one, I think it was at House of Records. Didn't know it existed. But of course it's like, hey, bonus tracks. Say no more. And then we have... The New Old Fashioned. This is their next album. And uh, some of the covers haven't aged all that well. They do a cover of Marvin Gaye, the Charlie Puth song. And then uh, and All About That Bass, the uh, Megan Trainor song. So kind of a connection there because uh, uh, Megan Trainor, I think, was involved in Marvin Gaye. And then Shut Up and Dance, the um, Walk the Moon song. But my favorite track on here is the closing track, the movie medley. They do a medley of uh, movie themes, and they put their own lyrics to them. The lyrics summarize the plots, so you can you can just imagine what the lyrics are when they do the theme from uh, Star Wars and E. T. and Indiana Jones. So a lot, it's like half of the movie movie medley is John Williams. So it's like yes, I'm there. Thank you very much. Uh, but yes, the whole rest of the of the movie medley is so entertaining. They even put lyrics to the. Uh, the 20th Century Fox fanfare at the beginning. So, hilarious. You've got to listen to the movie Medley by Straight No Chaser. You've got to listen to that one. Uh, it, even if you're just a movie fan and not necessarily a music fan, you're going to love that. And then their follow-up album, uh, One Shot, again with the drink-themed album titles. Uh, I won't go into that. Um, good songs, obviously, on here. And then their uh, most recent album, their brand new release, a uh, month or two old, Yacht on the Rocks. The only thing I don't like about this is the album title. The fa the uh, name that they've given that kind of music, Yacht Rock, I, where did they come up with that? That's just stupid. I'm sorry, but... You know, it's like, do all the people who listen to that stuff, are they all rich enough to own yachts? No. So where did that music come from? Or that, that, name, that name come from? I don't know. But anyway, they do covers of Toto... Toto um, Christopher Cross, my brain is, um, let's see, uh, Steely Dan Reeling in the Years, uh, What a Fool Believes, so they do uh, at least one Doobie Brothers song, Lovely Day, the, um, what is his name, dang it, Bill Withers song, and which, was that, is that called, considered Yacht Rock? I don't know, but anyway, uh, Lido, Lido Shuffle, the uh, Boz Skag song, so yes, this is a good album. It's one of my favorites so far from 2023, so I recommend it. Then we have another um, uh, electro-pop-ish uh, synthwave kind of stuff, uh, uh, Strange Talk. This is their album, Cast Away, and a kind of a cool story with this is um, I heard it playing way back in uh, 2014, so it would have been, it would have been 2013? Yeah, I heard it playing in a Barnes & Noble in 2013. And so I went up and said, who is this, and can I buy the CD? Well, the CD apparently wasn't out yet. So I don't know why they were playing it in the store. I think they were, they made a mistake. They're not supposed to play an album in the store that they don't have. I At least I think that's the general rule. It's like, why would you play it if the customers can't buy it? That would only frustrate the customers, wouldn't it? Yes, I was a little frustrated that I couldn't buy it. So I made note of it and picked it up uh, several weeks later. It was it was a few weeks later when it was finally out. It was the Christmas season when I was in that Barnes Noble and heard it. So I waited and I had to wait until January to actually pick it up, or it might have even been February. 
So anyway, good stuff. Here's another artist that uh, a lot of you have probably not heard of. His name is Casey Stratton. And he does... It's hard to describe. It's uh, pop with a, a little bit of... Uh, let's see, what am I trying to say? Um, ambient pop, I guess, maybe? Uh, it's got vocals in it. So his voice is gorgeous. And, I mean, you look at him, masculine guy, you know, nice, muscly guy. His voice is at uh, almost a soprano. It's kind of like a, I don't know, what's what's below soprano? Is it alto? Uh, but yes, so his voice kind of takes you by surprise. It takes a little getting used to. I don't normally like voices that are higher pitched than, you know, a tenor. Uh, but there are exceptions, and he's one of them. And yes, kind of ambient. I, I, I'm going to be, you know, not describing this very well. But... Um, Blood is the song that, uh, one of my favorite songs in here. You've got to listen to that one. So yes, some of the stuff is has more beat to it, you know, more more a bit of an uh, electronic beat to it, kind of like EDM club-ish songs. And some of them are, are a bit more, uh, you know, a little, more, a little bit more atmospheric, uh, kind of like Enya-ish. Not quite the almost operatic stuff that Enya does. You know, it's more pop, but uh, it's very interesting. Kind of uh, one-of-a-kind sort of stuff. But yeah, very good. And then here's another album that uh, has a story to go with it. Uh, this is called The Strawberry Zots. I had never heard of these guys. Uh, back two years ago, in March of 2021, when uh, we saw Frank and Zot, our cats, on the local news. They have a Pet of the Week segment every week on the local news. That's where we found out about Frank and Zot, and we made an appointment to, uh, you know, because we wanted to go and uh, adopt them. And I just thought that Zot was a crazy name. I was fully intent on changing his name if if we adopted the cats. And so I was at Epic Seconds one day. Um, this was like the day before our appointment to go uh, meet the cats, and we eventually adopted them, of course. And I see this CD here on the shelf, The Strawberry Zots. So I picked it up and... and I thought, okay, this is meant to be, and obviously I picked it up without even thinking, without hesitating, and decided, okay, his name is going to be Zot. You know, now and forever, his name is Zot. I'm not, I, I never gave another thought to changing his name. So that's kind of why, you know, that's kind of the story behind this CD. A neat little story, isn't it? I thought so. It's connected to our cats, the most amazing additions to our family I ever could have imagined or hoped to have. But uh, yeah. So, and, and to top it off, the music is pretty darn good, too. It's kind of a bit of a uh, throwback to 60s uh, psychedelic and bubblegum pop. Yeah, it's kind of a blend of psychedelic and bubblegum sort of stuff. And, and a little bit of power pop thrown in. So, yeah. On top of that whole other neat story, the music is actually good. So, uh, yes. I, whenever I see that CD, I'm reminded of my cats. So, on to... Yeah, this video is going to be too long. I don't have much left. We're about two-thirds of the way done. Uh, Barbara Streisand. I, th I think you know who she is. Uh, you've probably heard of her before. Uh, this is the essential to disc. And then we have um, Love is the Answer. And this one was not in my sister's CD collection, but it kind of reminds me of my sister. My sister was a big Diana Krall fan, and this CD was produced by Diana Krall. So I decided to pick it up, and she actually features on one or two, one or two songs on here. So that's kind of why I bought it and have it. I thought I heard Frank snoring a minute ago. Uh, so anyway, yeah, pretty good album. And then we have a duets album, Encore. This is uh, Movie Partner Sing Broadway. And uh, excuse me, one of the big reasons I'm keeping this one is Seth MacFarlane is on here. So, yes. Uh, who do we have? Anne Hathaway, Daisy Ridley, Patrick Wilson, Anthony Newley, Alec Baldwin, Hugh Jackman, Melissa McCarthy, Antonio Banderas, Chris Pine, and Jamie Foxx. So, a star-studded lineup on this CD. So, and some of them surprised me with their singing talent. And then we have another similar CD. Uh, this is not necessarily uh, movie stars, but uh, other duet partners. Uh, the, the album is called Partners. And we've got Andrea Bocelli, Michael Bublé, Babyface, Jason Gould, Josh Groban, Billy Joel, John Legend, John Mayer, Elvis Presley, uh, posthumous duet, obviously, uh, Lionel Richie, Blake Shelton, and Stevie Wonder. Yes. She knows how to pick the uh, 
big names for her du duets albums. So, and I have a, I don't know how I feel about those posthumous duets where they digitally uh, blend, you know, they digitally add in somebody else's, uh, a dead singer's voice. I don't know how I feel about those. Anyway, here we have a country slash Americana duet called Striking Matches. Oh, good. The cover, the cover does show up in the light. Yeah, when I'm looking at this under normal light, you can barely see their, uh, the figures on here. But yes, great stuff. I don't know how I found out, out about these, this, uh, duo, but they are fantastic. Um, Trouble is, as trouble does, it goes, Make a Liar Out of Me is one of my favorite songs on this album. And a, lo a lot of the time, what I like about male-female duets, uh, par uh, partnerships, is male-female duos, is the vocal harmonies that they have. And the vocal harmonies are here on here are top-notch. Great stuff. Yes, uh, Make a Liar Out of Me, uh, When the Right One Comes Along, that's another really good one. Uh, what a Broken Heart Feels Like another standout. So yes, check out Striking Matches. They were supposed to put out a sophomore album. I kept hearing about it, kept waiting for it. It never materialized. And that, I still hate that, that that's the only album we got out of them. Up next, we have a full-fledged rock band, Stroke Nine. They made a few albums back in the late 90s. And uh, this has a good story with it, too. Uh, I'll tell you about it some other time. I don't want to make this video too long. Uh, but yes, Nasty Little Thoughts is the name of this album. Uh, every song on here. Well, maybe I will tell you about it. Uh, found this at Skips way back, you know, about the early 2000s. This was released in 1999, and I never heard of the guys before. Uh, picked it up, decided to take, take it with me and listen to it. I listened to my music at the time with a CD Walkman, so I put it on when I got on the bus, put it on shuffle mode, and it's like every single song I enjoyed. So, it's you know, it's like you know, usually they front load the good songs on the beginning of the album, and that's it. But uh, yes, "Little Black Backpack" is a really good song. Uh, "Washing and Wondering" is a good, great one. Uh, uh, "Tear Me in Two is a great ballad. So yes, a very, very good album. Uh, their follow-up, "Rip It Off," was not quite as good, but almost as good. Um, "California," the closing track on here, is a ballad. That's one of the best ballads I've ever heard. Um, Kick Some Ass is a good song, um, and Don't Worry is a great one, and Anywhere is another really good song on here, so I don't know, this is, I guess, naming the tracks on here, looking at tra track listings, this one is just about as good as Nasty Little Thoughts, so good one. And then we have Strome, he is a Belgian uh, hip-hop artist, uh, blends hip-hop and R&B. Uh, yes, I, <clears throat> interesting story was discovering this one, too. I was at uh, one of the uh, Everyday Musics up in Portland, and looking under the Huey Lewis in the News place card, you know, the plastic cards that they have, and Strome was, somebody had misfiled his CD in where Huey Lewis is supposed to be. So that's how I discovered this guy. I'd never heard of him before. Uh, the song titles were in French, so I decided to pick it up, and uh, I was charmed. Uh, Papa Ute is one of the uh, greatest, best songs on here. And uh, Conse is uh, this song on here. And Papa Ute is here. Uh, Pentatonix, interestingly, covered Papa Ute on one of their albums. So, yes. And you have to kind of understand the French language to see that he puts some plays on words on some of the songs. Uh, Conse is about cancer. About, I guess I think his dad passed away from cancer. And so Conse sounds like cancer. And interesting, he's very clever with his uh, lyrics and music, and of course it's all in French, so I don't understand all of it, but uh, the rhythms and melodies and stuff are really, really good too. So, sad to say though, his most recent album, uh, Multitude, it cooled on me really fast, and so unfortunately this is the only, only album of his that stuck with me. So, uh, yeah. Moving on, I am determined to keep this album, this video, uh, probably won't keep it under 50 minutes, but I'll be pretty close. Uh, the Struts is a rock band. They kind of have a queen thing about them. They're kind of a little over the top with the um, the singing and the music and stuff. Very rambunctious and boisterous, I guess you'd say. Uh, but they're good. Uh, Everybody Wants is their first album. I've got that one. I've got their sophomore album, Young and Dangerous. 
And I've got their third album, Strange Days. So uh, they must be pretty, I must think they're pretty darn good if I have three albums of theirs. Uh, Tom Morello appears on here, as does Robbie Williams, the British pop artist. So that's a little bit strange uh, pairing. But uh, uh, Albert Hammond Jr. also appears on a track on here. So they kind of, uh, uh, kind of, you know, uh, stretch their feelers out a little bit on this album. So, yes, good stuff. And coming down to the last, oh, eight or nine CDs here, almost done. Uh, Ruben Sutter, American Idol winner, season two. Uh, you guys probably know who he is. Uh, good stuff. Uh, leans a little bit into the hip-hop realm, so not my favorite stuff, but uh, actually, my throat's really getting sore. i got to take a drink, sorry. <clears throat> when I talk a lot, my throat uh, pays the price. And here we have a recent bargain bag CD, Superhero. Uh, lo lots of fun this one was. Uh, can't exactly remember what genre it was, but and the cover art is pretty cl clever too. The uh, book spines list the uh, are the track listing, so that's very cool. I thought. So uh, then we have. Was this a Bark and Make? I think it was. The Sub Dudes, uh, a live album by them, uh, called At Last. And I heard one of their songs, I can't remember where, and uh, have always been curious to check them out, but I never have until a Bargain Bag uh, presented me with one of their CDs. So I do intend to check them out a little bit more in more detail here. Now this one is another one you guys probably haven't heard of. Sugar Bomb is the name of this group. And I think this is the only album they put out. At least this was the only major label album. Uh, if you think, hmm, gosh, who would I compare these guys to? Maybe Weezer? They kind of have that irreverent sense of humor, uh, high-energy songs, and uh, and they actually, a couple of songs, they actually incorporate hip-hop or rap into them. Uh, Motormouth is a good example of that on here, and uh, but uh, really good power pop stuff too, good power pop sensibility. Uh, what a Drag is the opening track, that's really good. Hello is a fantastic song. Yeah, this is... Uh, and After All, the closing track is really good, too. So, yeah, one of my favorite... Uh, I, I would classify these guys as power pop. So, yeah, one of my favorite power pop albums. Uh, very interesting cover art. And uh, despite appearances, this is not the Japanese version. Uh, this is the regular American version, because you've got, you've got Japanese text here. But no Obi strip. This is just the plain old American version of the CD, so... Yeah, good stuff. Then we have, uh, that's not all the sugar we have. We have Sugar Ray, uh, their album 1459. And this is a, this was a deluxe edition uh, of their CD. It's actually a two-disc set. It's got some bonus tracks on uh, the second disc, a uh, uh, live acoustic song and uh, well, two live uh, versions and a song from their previous album featured. So this was from... Singapore. That's where it's from. Can't remember. I think this was at. Was it at Skips? I can't remember. Anyway, I found it used somewhere. And then Sugar Ray's self titled album, which is, uh, I think, really good. I think this is as good as 1459, honestly. Uh, some great stuff on here. Uh, Answer the Phone is uh, the opening track. It's really good. Um, Sorry Now is a really good song. The closing song, Disaster Piece. That's perhaps my favorite Sugar Ray song. That's just really, really good. And then we're on into some... Uh, we're stepping back to the disco years with Donna Summer. Some of her... Uh, this is a 20th Century Masters set. Uh, love to Love You Baby and I Feel Love, as well as her take on MacArthur Park. Hot Stuff, Bad Girls, On the Radio. So, it is her hits. That's what those uh, 20th Century Masters discs give you, is the hits. Then we have some uh, jangle pop from the early 90s, late 80s, 1989. Uh, the Sundays. Uh, this is their debut album, Reading, Writing, and Arithmetic. Um, they are most famous for their song, Here's Where the Story Ends. Uh, you've probably heard that uh, here and there. And they also do a cover of... Oh, no, it's not on this, al it's not on this album. I thought it was. Um, they do a cover of Wild Horses. I guess that's, I think that's on their second album which I used to have, and now I don't know why I got rid of it. 
Maybe because that was the only song on there that I liked, and I could stream that if I want to anytime. But yeah. Their debut album, I thought, was a keeper. Good stuff. And then uh, we had some sugar a few minutes ago, and now we're getting into some super to close out this block of my Hold On CD collection. Superfruit. This is an offshoot uh, featuring two members of Pentatonix. Um, I can't get tell you their names off the top of my head. But uh, yes, this was really good, I thought. And this is the difference between this and Pentatonix is they actually do have instrumental backing on these songs. So, uh, yeah, it's, you know, uh, they are both uh, openly gay. So that's kind of... Uh, well, it doesn't really, that subject doesn't really dominate the music, but they don't hide it on a few of these uh, tracks on this album. So, uh, yeah, I enjoyed the album, and the cover is actually Scratch and Sniff, and I, I think it's, uh, you, you get a berry scent when you scratch and sniff, but you can kind of see there are a couple of scratches on there. Uh, there are images there, so I don't want to scratch it too much, because it'll ruin the CD uh, insert even more. So anyway, fun little album. Not, not one of my favorites, but it's still fun. And we also have, here's another one that fits into the weird music in my collection category, Super Heavy. This is a supergroup featuring Joss Stone, Mick Jagger, Let's see if I can give them to you in relatively short order. Um, let me see. Um, the guy from Eurythmics, uh, shoot. Uh, Dave... Dave Stewart, thank you, and uh, yeah, Mick Jagger, Dave Stewart, uh, Joss Stone, and A.R. Rahman, the uh, Indian film composer. So yeah, a very interesting, you know, four artists all from different genres, and they do kind of do a blend of genres on this album. It's very interesting stuff. Uh, you can't fit it into one genre box, so if you are averse to Stuff that you can't really pigeon, you know, pinpoint into a specific genre. You may not like this, but it's really good. Um, see, Unbelievable is one of my favorite songs on here. And it's actually been a long time since I've listened to this album. But, uh, yeah, very good stuff. Very unique, very interesting stuff. So, uh, yeah, I think I... Uh, pardon my finger. Uh, I think I made pretty good time on here since I discussed 90 CDs. But yes, that'll do it for chapter 19 of my Hold On CD collection. Chapter 20 is the next one. I can't believe it. I hope you enjoyed this video. If so, hit that like button and share it with your friends. And before you go, drop me some feedback in the comment section. I'd love to know what you think. Uh, don't forget to subscribe to my channel. Hit that bell icon so you don't miss future videos. And click my username to browse my past videos. Links to my socials and my favorite fellow YouTubers are in the description below. Otherwise, thank you so much for watching. I'll see you next time, and remember, life's too short to be a music snob.